Mrs. Bromley. Good afternoon. Afternoon, Dr. Goldhawk. Please. The day has finally arrived. Tea, scones? Yes, tea, please. Excuse me. Afternoon. May we have some tea? Uh, for three, please. Certainly. The Colonel will be along any moment. Uh, I'm very grateful to you for persuading him to come here. Of course. I, I want to help you, Mrs. Bromley. Really, I do. I want as many of our boys as possible to come home. And I'm sure Colonel Portland feels the same. Yes. After all, he does owe me quite a favour. Oh, oh, what a count. Actually, he's here, so the story will have to wait. Excuse me for a moment. Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Bromley, Colonel Portland. Mm. Afternoon, Colonel. Mm. Right. Well, then, I suppose I should start. Three years ago, on the 19th of September, 1944, at Arnhem, my husband, Sergeant Thomas Bromley of the Staffordshire Regiment, your regiment, was pronounced missing in action. But, gentlemen, I have never heard anything more. I expect that he is now what your people would classify as missing, presumed deceased. But a woman knows when she has been widowed and I feel it in my heart and in every fiber of my being that he is still here. And so I have spent every day since that telegram arrived petitioning members of parliament, journeying across the country to speak to the other men from the war who survived that day, standing outside the war office trying to get the attention of anyone who went inside. And all of this finally led to this meeting with you. I tracked you both down because, from what I've been able to put together, you were the last two men out there to have seen Thomas. When I heard you had been decommissioned, I contacted the doctor. You were rather tricky to find. And so here we are. So I am begging you to tell me, please, what happened to my husband? It was pure chaos. Men out of position, men without packs, and Jerry waiting. We cannot possibly know what happened to Thomas. Tea for three. Can I get you anything else? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, but if you were the last men to have seen him... I'm not sure that we were. If I could just show you the Look, documents, I, I'm sure... I served in the Great War and in this last show against Hitler. I spent over 10 years on active service in war. When a man goes missing in action, I'm afraid after all this time, there's nothing that can be done. Colonel, I know my husband is alive. I, I think that perhaps you are misunderstanding me somewhat. I think not. Uh, you must know. Something, anything. There are certain things that are better left unsaid. So you do? I think it best if we not push the colonel any further. Please. Last I saw my men, was on the morning of the drop. They were parachuted behind enemy lines into the heart of a German battalion. Thomas was afraid of heights, you know. <laughs> God only knows what was going through his head. Anything could have happened out there. He was scared. Not of Jerry, but of the drop. After we boarded the Dakota, I slipped him a few pills to calm him down. Poor Thomas. War changes men. 
I'm sorry for your loss, but, but you have to accept it and, and move on. So with all due respect, I may be just a lowly combat medic, but I have seen a fair few miracles happen in war. So if Mrs. Bromley says that her husband is alive, I see no reason to doubt her. Thank you, Doctor. Now look, my dear, since you are quite adamant that your husband is alive, I will not debate with you any further. I've told you all that I know. I cannot help. Please. Good day. Did you mean what you said? That you believed me? Yes. Although I think it unlikely. I have learned from being a doctor that Women have a sort of sense for these things. <laughs> Plus, I had a soft spot for Thomas. I want to help you, Mrs. Bromley. Thank you, Doctor. I know we will find him. Now, let's finish this tea and uh, think about where we go next. Yes, uh, well, uh, these are the documents from the men who survived that day. That sounds like an excellent place to start. <laughs> 